Hello, and welcome back to ERP Tips and Tricks. Today, Satch and Thakri will be walking us through the next part of how to create a purchase order. Last time, Sachin showed us how to create the header in a purchase order. Today, he will be showing us part two, stocked line. Take it away, Sachin. Thank you, Erika. Hello, everyone. Um, continuing from our last session where we created the header of a purchase order, Today we will be creating a stock line on the purchase order line. So when you see this window, you will see purchase order line. That's where you want to be while creating a st um, the purchase order line. There are different types of uh, purchase orders uh, lines which you can create. One is stock, which is stock in the inventory. Then there are non-stock, which you don't stock in the inventory. And then uh, other information like the freight and the miscellaneous of the comments is what you would like to add if you need to. Um, but we'll today we'll be talking about the stock line. So as I go to creating the stock line, I would click on the stock line and my warehouse information would be required where I want this to be received in. So which warehouse I need to be in. So by default, if you have maintained any of those, that should be okay. That should let you kind of, you know, get the default where, uh, warehouse on the on the purchase order. If not, you can actually go and um, select whichever the warehouse you would like to have, and you can just go select that, and that would give that warehouse code to that line. Here at this point, you would tab out to go and select any of your parts which you want to purchase or any of the components you want to you know uh, purchase from a supplier so at this point i'm going to pick any of the components which i need to uh, purchase from the supplier we added at the top uh, and that would be that code so i can either go search by the stock code name here or the description or i can search by the stock code number in the sequencing, it gives you a sequence how you can search in that window. If you just you don't know the codes and you want to go by the description, you would always do that so that you can always do by the description, doing the change like that. Uh, or the stock code, you would do it, you know, create, change it to that. Now you can enter the stock code here. It says start at the stock code. That's what it does. Um, but uh, would recommend to search by the pattern search so that even if you don't know the code, you just know some part of it, you could just type it here um, and that would bring up a list of, you know, the, the various list of uh, stock codes which are already there in the system that would kind of, you know, help to quickly search if you don't know the, and, and, and you don't need to remember the stock code numbers in that case, okay? Uh, that's how we, so we, we pull in the stock code and that, that, uh, 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 that is at this line at the cell level now that the moment you tab out so that's very important always remember to tab out not pointing the mouse and clicking on the next field syspro always wants you to tab out so that the information related to what you have selected automatically fills in on the lines here the description filled in uh, for the next item which is the purchase or quantity you would tab out again and you would say oh, the quantity you want to buy. Um, the UOM, what you see right now, the purchase order UOM, it could be an alternate, it could be different uh, if based on what you have maintained as an alternate or not in the stock code master. If you have not, then whatever the default inventory stock code uh, UOM is, that's going to default. Okay. So uh, tabbing out from there, now you would go r right into Catalog is basically the supplier part number. If you need to maintain that, let's say the supplier calls this stock or something else, right? So it is, uh, if it, it is calling C, S, B, or something like that, uh, they, have a, they have their own names and they want to see that printed on the purchase order. When they're doing that, th this is what they would do. Okay, so they, you would maintain it that way. Uh, the job is primarily if you have created a job and you specifically want this purchase order to be created for a given job which you have created which needs certain components then you would associate the job number to this purchase order line okay 
current due date is directly flowing in from the header where we were entering it first um, that date can always be changed at the line so if you have multiple lines with different due dates you could change it uh, that's kind of useful and it is depending on how you uh, kind of uh, depending on the lead times what the supplier has for certain parts he, he, he can deliver on this date others he cannot deliver so you would you know want, want to make some changes there and you know maintain that at the line okay uh, this the checkbox for MRP schedule is always checked by default uh, because what it does is when you run the MRP, it will consider the purchase order you have already created and it will also look at the line and say that, okay, you have a purchase order for this quantity for this raw material. Moving on from there, now you have the costing where you would like to, what kind of cost you want to associate to the, to the, um, to the stock code which you are buying. So it could be a manual where you could actually manual go and you know enter whatever the price you want that that uh, order to be created for. If you want to go from the last uh, from the list price which was already maintained, you could uh, go by that price as well, which is by default it's already maintained, or the current cost. So current cost like is based on the costing which the system has done in the past based on inventory, that is what it is defaulting. Uh, we could go by the manual if we don't have. And the last cost is primarily the one which is the costing uh, run has done that. That's what it is. Uh, so I will just pick for now, I'll just pick the manual and enter it and say for $25, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, if you have any discounts, you could enter the discounts factor uh, and you could maintain that. Other than that, all information what we needed to be entered for the line, stock line is there. Now we need to click here to save this line and it's going to prompt like this. Okay to save the stock line. Then click on okay and as you see the the summary or the line is refreshed right at the bottom. So now it opens up to create a new line. And here you, you you would go pick up the next stock code which you want to enter for this purchase order. Create a purchase order with a stock line. Check back for our third part on how to create a purchase order by adding a non-stock line. Thank you. Thank you, Sachin. Be sure to like and subscribe the Crawford Software YouTube channel in order to stay connected with all the best ERP tips and tricks. Thank you.